Hello all and welcome back to the channel. We are still in the middle of the summer and the birds are breeding both indoor and outdoor. Lots of nests, eggs and chicks all around and many chicks are fledging but I must be honest and say that not all is good. I still don't know the reason but I see many more blank eggs than I'm used to. And actually this goes for both indoor and outdoor breeding. But still this is a season I'm very proud of. A lot of very good results and new breeding for me. We don't have time to see it all today, but I'm still going to take you through a lot of the breeding results and breeding attempts so you can see what's good and what's not. At the same time, of course, we're going to take a look on the status indoor, where also some birds are breeding. And then we take a short detour from the small birds to the cockatoos, which some of you may have seen I had an accident with. Looking forward to showing that. And as well, we're going to look at the budgies breeding a lot. This beautiful pair of ultramarine grosbeaks uh, have made a lot of courtship and they actually start to build a nest as well, but uh, nothing further yet. This pair of white eyes actually had one chick, but it died in rain, but it seems the parents are on it again. What's actually the most successful these days are my yellow crowned weaver birds, a yellow crowned bishop. They have several nests already, uh, I think four or five chicks fledged and they keep starting new nest building. They can build free hanging nests, but my most productive male right now keeps using these uh, boards, bamboo nests to build his nest inside. Another bird who at my aviary prefers the nest boxes is the red-headed finch. They keep going at it, but uh, unfortunately most eggs are blank and those few birds or chicks that hatched actually got thrown out by the parents, but uh, I just introduced two new females to see if that get stirred up a bit, so the eggs will be fertile the next time. Also my diamond file tail finches keep having blank eggs, but they uh, prefer to build the nests in green leaves or on top of something else, but never use the board nests. I recently bought and introduced a new female Luzon bleeding heart dove, but until now I haven't seen any interest shown from my two birds uh, towards the new one, so uh, not sure I actually have a pair yet. It's very nice birds and I really recommend them for everyone who has some space in the aviary. All my major goldfinches have started to mold, so they will probably wait to fall. A big success for me this year is large chick from the village weavers. It's doing very well and is eating all by itself now. It's uh, quite big and uh, spent most of the time with the two females right now, but I still don't know which sex it's going to have. My two village weaver males are a great joy to watch these days. They keep singing and building nests all the time. Really, they just built a huge house with three different nests on top of each other. It looks amazing, but I don't think the females will use it for rearing chicks. And actually right now I know there's a chick at least in one of the nests. I can see it because uh, one of the females keep going in and out, but the most obvious time is the bird droppings below the nest on the ground. Another good sign is to look at the nests they built, because they only make the nest complete when a female has chosen to uh, lay her eggs in one of them. I just had two new chicks from the Pekin Robins, but unfortunately they died both yesterday. Unfortunately I weren't able to provide new insects in the morning, and uh, that resulted in both chicks being kicked out of the nests. I found them dead on the ground. I experienced the same in the days around my father's death, as I weren't able to feed on a regular basis, meaning two to three times a day, and that resulted in several dead birds as well. This is really something you need to be aware of if you wish to breed and keep soft bills. Most insects and food we provide for the soft bills can't keep fresh for very long, so you need to provide several times a day. In this reason, the soft bills can feel high maintenance, but on every other way, they are quite easy to keep. But if you know you won't be able to provide fresh food several times a day, you should choose another bird to breed. When I found the two dead uh, picking robin chicks on the ground, I also found this blue egg, but I haven't been able to identify it. Besides the picking robin, the northern cardinal or red cardinal is one of my favorite soft bills. Been very lucky to breed them and have several chicks the last couple of years but this year they only keep having blank eggs but they are on the third attempt now so fingers crossed again i'm not completely sure but at least four to five pagan rubbing chicks have fledged and they are all over the every now 
Right now, the adults and the chicks of the Peking Robin are spread all over the aviary, but I'm looking forward to the fall when all the Peking Robins will group up uh, in one big flock and follow each other around the aviary. It's going to be a very impressive sight. I have a flock of six starfinches in total in the aviary, but it seems, unfortunately, that I only have one female, and perhaps this is the main reason that no chicks fled to the nest. Actually, I haven't seen any indication of it, but I have a hunch that some of the surplus males ruin the attempts of my breeding pair. The pair keep building nests, they have eggs, they incubate them, and they have chicks, but the chicks die or throw it out uh, within a few days after hatching. Right now they are on fertile eggs again, but I'm thinking about removing them or putting them to a pair of society finches to uh, be able to have some chicks. Nothing is decided yet, uh, as I always prefer to have the natural parents rear the chicks. As you may recall, I lost my purple grenadier female to a hole in the aviary, and I also lost my female cotton bleu, so I'm looking for new females from both those species. And as well, I'm still looking for a female for my Asia tit. My parish finches had one litter before the female died, and I think they had uh, four chicks, but I don't see them much in the aviary. And that goes as well for many of the other bird species in the aviary. I don't really know how many there are before I catch them in the autumn, so that's always a very interesting time of the year as well. Contrary to the problem with the star finches, where I have too many males, with the long tail finches, it seems I have only one male and actually five females. So I'm looking for more males to those. I'm also looking for females for my white eared bilbil and my black widow bird. And unfortunately, that is always a problem if you have many species of birds, but only a few of each species. Luckily, that's not a problem with the budgies. I have, I think, 20 budgies in the cockatoo ching aviary, and indoor I have one pair of budgies, all breeding, both indoor and outdoor, and this is my latest litter of chicks. I think there are five or six chicks in this litter, some with black eyes and some with red eyes. Going to be interesting to see if they can all manage to grow up. And if we go back outdoor in the big aviary, we have my largest birds, even larger than the cockatoos. It is the white-cheeked Turago. They have been fooling around for some years, but this year finally they began to lay eggs. And they sat on them for roughly one month, but they were blank. Uh, they laid new eggs as well, but didn't really get uh, going with incubating those. So now I've just removed all of them to see if they will go again. I'm quite sure they will because these days the male is very aggressive towards the female. It's a sign very often seen with the Turakos and sometimes you should be aware that the male can actually kill the female. So uh, my female sits a lot down in the bushes in the shrubs to hide, but she seems okay and uh, no feathers harmed. So I won't remove her nor cut the wing feathers of the male. But I will watch them closely to see if the male will be too aggressive. But uh, not yet, and actually today I saw the female up in the nest again. So hopefully new eggs will be led shortly. They will incubate them and hopefully they will be uh, fertile this time. And I still see it as a success that they actually gone so far this year. Another success of this year is the breeding of the Sudan Golden Sparrow. You see the female and the chicks here. So far with at least six chicks in two attempts, and I know the parents are going again. One pair of my yellow canary birds stopped breeding, so I moved them outdoor, but still most of the canary birds are indoor. I think it has been a very good breeding year for the canary birds this year. You can see some of the chicks here. My other pair of yellow canary birds have four eggs right now, and my pair of red mosaic canary birds also have four eggs. So it seems it's some very productive and good birds I got. My indoor pair of red crested cardinals uh, are having a break right now, which they deserve. And these chicks from mosaic canary birds and partridges are just waiting to get their adult plumage. And after a break on four or five months, I'm starting my society finches up again. And right now I put four pairs into new cages. A pair of glossy starlings had one chick. It survived only 
four days, then they killed it. But nevertheless, it's a good start and a first time for me. They actually begun building again and yesterday they laid the first eggs. So hopefully they will give it a new chance and the chick will survive this time. All in all, most indoor cages are free at the moment, waiting for the birds to come in and for those species who breed in the uh, winter season to begin. Where my indoor pair of red crested cardinals is on a break right now, my outdoor pair seems to have chicks right now. They spent lots and lots of time trying to build nests where it wasn't possible and lay eggs in the free where they fell down. But I put up a new nest for them and finally they accepted this and uh, now it seems they are feeding chicks up there. So very, very good. I found out that the best way or easiest way for me to tell when there are chicks in the nest of the cardinals and also with the pigeons is to see when the feathers on the stomach gets uh, messed up because the chicks are moving around. So far this sign to look on the adult birds have proven to be correct each time. And this way I'm able to increase the amount of live foods and frozen insects to be provided as soon as the chicks hatch in the nest. Another project I just finished with the kids was to give the rabbits a larger enclosure so they could really move around. It's situated right next to the big aviary and the rabbits are enjoying it very much, especially these days with lots of sun and very hot weather. Even though it's a joy to watch and the rabbits are really enjoying themselves, the rabbit kittens are growing up fast, so very shortly we need to remove them. As some of you may have seen in another video, I had an accident with my cockatoos. This meant that the female cockatoo escaped from my aviary and was nowhere to be seen. I began a big search and used both television and Facebook. And within three days, someone saw her in a tree four kilometers away and called me. When we arrived, I put a transport case on the grass and sat down and started to call her. And within 30 seconds or so, she landed just beside me on the grass and by herself walked into the cage. Very easy and it was such a huge pleasure and relief for us. As we got back home, we introduced her to the male again in the aviary and they were so happy to see each other. But what uh, was very interesting to see as well was that she really wanted to talk with me also and not only with the male. But a very good story. Hopefully this will never happen again. So as you can see, a lot is going on each day and each hour actually. It's a very fascinating hobby and I really love it. Some failures, but even more successes. All in all, a very good breeding season for me and the birds so far. In one of my next videos, I'll try to summarize which successes we've had so far, because it's actually quite a lot of chicks and a lot of first times for me. So it's very interesting. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. You can write to me in the comment sections below, and I'll try to answer each and every one of you. It's always very interesting to hear from you and also to read what your own results are with your own birds. Thank you so much for watching and following and being part of this bird community. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye.